What's up? How are you guys today? We're gonna go over my hair mineral analysis, but before that, I'll touch briefly on blood work. And there's several reasons why it's not necessary past first addressing your health issues. Most blood tissue levels are not actual good indicators of body tissue status, especially vitamins and minerals. You could look at cholesterol, ferritin, certain liver markers, and those are you know, a good overall idea that you are having health issues. But beyond that, combined with doctors generally not wanting to write scripts unless it's something they think's wrong with you, makes getting the blood work very, very, very expensive. Yeah, there's websites like Walk-In Lab, but not everyone can drop four or $500 every two months to get blood work. I certainly can't. However, the hair mineral analysis is about $100 and you can't really get a doctor to write a script for it anyway. So this is a very good investment in regards to what mineral supplements you should be taking and if there's any toxic metals or things in your diet that need to be adjusted. I've been doing these uh, for almost four years now, since 2019, and I've been able to see how my mineral status has gone from like kind of crazy when I didn't exactly know what I was doing with the supplements and overdosing stuff to now where we can see as I follow this diet, as I take certain supplements, things are really evening out and I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, so we're basically going to touch on the mineral, what my status is with it, and what I'm currently doing, how to address it. So calcium is a little bit on the lower end now. I might start drinking some higher calcium mineral water in the morning like Gerolsteiner. And this is really from just completely avoiding dairy and most sources of calcium in the diet because it can give insomnia and cause poor gut motility. Uh, but we're not too low yet. You know, it, it doesn't have to absolutely be addressed. That is down from 27. So we know that a year ago is still like a, a very, very long time for those calcium stores to still be pretty good despite not taking any. You know, the body is very efficient at recycling and doesn't really need certain minerals in super large amounts. Magnesium uh, has gone down a bit, but things are evening out more. You know, some things are really out of whack, really out of control, really high, but we're getting more to a baseline where everything's even. And I've been taking magnesium in large amounts every single day, 400 to 500 milligrams. So this is telling me maybe I need to increase uh, the dose even more uh, to get where I want to be. And then when I increase that calcium and magnesium, that might help me even out the sodium and potassium even more, which it seems to have been. Uh, because, you know, about two years ago, my sodium and potassium levels were really crazy, which means I'm retaining a lot of water with the high carbohydrate diet. However, you know, this past year, uh, they've kind of regulated, gone down to a somewhat more normal amount. And I think, you know, continuing the diet, adding the magnesium, adding the calcium is going to get uh, the sodium and potassium uh, back in balance a little bit. You know, not, not salting your food is, isn't really going to make much of a difference. And I'm not even really consuming super high potassium foods. And I still actually need more salt in the diet, if anything. Copper and zinc uh, have kind of uh, been going down a bit. And it can be hard to absorb these minerals from just the diet if you do have impaired digestive function, liver damage like I do. And the metals tend to be very hard on digestion when you take them as supplements. I really don't like supplementing copper unless it's absolutely necessary. It's a heavy metal. Uh, zinc, I feel a little bit more okay supplementing, so we might add a little bit of that in, but um, the ratio has gotten a little better. Copper has lowered uh, slightly more than zinc has, but they are both going down a little bit, so I will keep in mind to have some supplementation in there. Phosphorus, about the same. Diet's very high in meat. We're not really too worried about it. Iron has gone up slightly. Not too concerned. It's just a slight variation. These are, are two minerals that we're not really going to go out of our way to get them or adjust the diet to reduce them. Manganese uh, has actually gone down a lot, almost half of what it was, probably because I was supplementing too much. So it's in a pretty decent spot right now. Chromium, not a mineral I, I worry about supplementing or worry about monitoring. Uh, selenium is the same, and I've been supplementing it maybe once a month. So as I've said, it's not really necessary to take this stuff every week, let alone every day. Once a month, selenium supplements have kept my levels higher than I actually need them to be. Uh, boron is something I should probably take a little bit more of. Um, not really too important. Cobalt, another thing I don't really monitor. Molybdenum has gone up. 
And this is something I've supplemented maybe every two weeks. So I know maybe I have to taper that down to once every two months, once a month. And sulfur has gone down slightly. Maybe taking the extra molybdenum has helped that. Uh, so overall, our goal is going to be continue taking a lot of magnesium every day, maybe implement some calcium to even out the sodium to potassium ratios, throw in a bit of zinc and maybe some boron and kind of, kind of stop all of the other stuff and let the diet take its course. Maybe if we incorporate some more potatoes frequently, uh, that'll give us some natural copper that we can um, get the mineral count up a little bit. But overall, everything looks pretty good. It's kind of where I want to be. I'm sleeping better. I'm sleeping good. So we, we know we're on the right track and we don't really have to supplement too much stuff. What's harder to tell is on the vitamin end of supplements because you can't exactly you know, take a liver biopsy and know what your B vitamin status is. Uh, the toxic elements look okay. Uh, arsenic has gone down, uranium has gone down, mercury has gone down, uh, cadmium went up a little bit, and aluminum is about the same. So the issue here is maybe a year and a half ago, I was consuming some type of canned good that possibly had arsenic. I don't know. And some of the canned foods, maybe the beans, do have aluminum in them. So uh, the level actually went pretty crazy high despite me only having you know, a canned food once a week, once every two weeks. So that is a bit concerning on the aluminum end if I really have to clean things up so much to the point where it's lowered. Everything else on the hair analysis, um, the additional elements, the other stuff, I'm not really worried or concerned about. Um, if you guys do want to get this, I do have an affiliate link I can put down below. By all means, don't feel like you're helping me out or, or I'm pressuring you to do that uh, because I, I don't really get much money from it. I will say that you should probably be getting these done at least once or twice a year to kind of know your status. And I guess one other thing we can touch on here is that this was a pubic hair sample. So that's a, a slow growth over several months. So it's, it's a like a status of several months of your mineral nutrition. If you just do a scalp sample every month, you can get a more accurate indicator of uh, what you're doing on a monthly basis. And, and maybe I'll try doing that. Um, you know, I don't cut my own hair and kind of weird to ask my barber to put a hair sample, but maybe we should do it just for like uh, three months in a row on the scalp and see, see what kind of results we get. Um, but that's where you can kind of get like really crazy variations if you're supplementing minerals and a lot of the minerals are coming out through the scalp. So uh, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely do some updated supplement videos in the near future, so you guys my routine, what I'm doing, uh, as well as maybe going over some blood work and some blood parameters that you can look at as well to monitor your health. Uh, but overall, guys, you know, just see what foods I'm eating, know that I'm trying to get as much on as possible, and that's really how I'm healing. This minerals, these things are a side uh, aspect and yeah there's some very significant stuff like the magnesium supplementing that has helped a lot but overall it's not as big of a deal as having the high quality foods in the diet having the probiotic getting some sun and grounding being active reducing the radiation if you guys do want to support me you can go to frank to check out all of my businesses but as always drop a like on the video leave a comment down below subscribe so that youtube can unsubscribe you next week and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow.